looking for ideas for spring crafts? If so, then I think you're going to enjoy this video. I've been saving up things I found in thrift stores over the last few months and I can't wait to use them and now the time has come. Maybe you make crafted items to sell or for gifts or maybe even for yourself. Even so, there's going to be something here that appeals to you. Right, no time for chatting. Let's get on with crafting. I can't wait to get started on some spring craft. So let's have a look what I'm going to be using. I've got lots of florals and bits and pieces. A flower pot that has been used for several crafts over the years and I'm going to reuse again. Why not? I've got a craft ribbon reel with no ribbon left on it. Some homemade, uh, as you can see, messy jarred green chalk paint. I've added some white to the green because it was a bit dark for the purpose I had and it hasn't dried yet and my jar's a little bit mucky as usual. I've got a missile thrush. Now I got this from the charity shop or thrift store and it's had a few issues. It's got a chip on there which we can fix and it's got a tail glued back on which you're not going to see. So I think I paid 20p for this. You can't go wrong at 20p. You can always hide mistakes. Well usually you can. We crafters are very clever at hiding issues that we don't want people to see. <laughs> and I've got a pen and some masking tape and a very messy finger. I'll be back when I've cleaned my finger. That'll do. It's only going to get covered in paint again anyway, so we need to clear off the space. I've got plenty of room to the side that I can put all these bits and pieces on. I always find it easier to work with a clear workspace. What do you like? Do you like clutter? Does clutter inspire you? Or do you find clutter makes you feel hemmed in and you need the space and openness? I'm an openness person. You may have a very steady hand. I don't. So masking tape it is. Don't forget if you're messy like me to cover your workspace. So this is the colour green I've got. It's quite a pale sage green, I would say, which I thought was very spring-like. I'm just going to paint the top around the, I don't know what you would call it, the lip. There's probably an official name for this little bit at the top of the pot. Do you know what it is? I always find the first few brush strokes on something that needs painting to be so enjoyable to watch. Look at the transformation. And I'm hoping that this being quite a porous material and it being a chalk paint, that I'm only going to need to use one coat. Setting coats are not as much fun. Not when you've already seen what they're going to look like. You're just trying to make it a little bit more of a solid colour. And that didn't take long at all. The thing that's going to take the longest is drying it. This is why I do try to avoid painting, as you know. All depends how you do them. If you don't want to do any painting, then you can really make them super quick. A last little whiz around. And we're done. Now I'll take the masking tape off. Be careful if you take this off before it's completely dry. You could end up accidentally touching the pot underneath where you don't want paint and getting paint down there as well. Point? Paint. <laughs> I can't even speak properly. I'm so busy concentrating on not making a mess. Oop, there we go. Oh, look at that. I think that completely transforms it. If you wanted to, you could put two lines of masking tape and put another stripe further down, but I like it like that. While that's drying a little, I'm going to deal with this poor little thrush's nose. I've got this, which is supposed to be khaki, but when I tried it out, I think it was a pretty good brown, but then you never know putting it directly onto white. Nope, we need darker. Yep, that's a bit darker. Let's try it. Mm, too orangey. Okay, I'm going for the big guns. This is henna. Yep, that's going to be okay. And what I'm going to do is do some little bits on the nose as well. I'm probably going to regret this. You know, when you fiddle around with things, you should stop. That's probably the point I think I'm at now, and I should stop it. Oh, I'm going for the whole nose. It's not a nose, is it? It's a beak. Do some little bits on the bottom. And then cover all the top, I think. Like that. There we go. 
Now because this flower pot is rather porous and I'm using chalk paint, it's virtually dry. So I'm going to carry on. I'm probably going to get covered in green paint. But then again, you know me, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I wasn't covered in paint. Right, move that out of the way. Put my pot back. Take this crafting ribbon spool and pop it in the pot. And it's too tall, which is part of the plan. Because then when you push it down to the height you want it, there... It's not going to fall out. Turn on your glue gun. Look at my glue gun. Poor thing. It probably weighs twice as much as it weighed when I first had it. <laughs> With all the layers of glue. What have you got? Glitter. Bits of cotton. Thread. Ooh, I'm not sure altogether. And now I'm going to glue my missile thrush onto my little spool. Or ribbon spool. A little bit of glue or a lot of glue and pop them on there there we go we're getting somewhere already now i'm going to take some of this lamb's ear or lamb's ear depending on how you pronounce it chop off that bit and then you can just wind it around like that but i think it's going to be much more difficult to control so i'm going to oops pulled a bit off i'm going to cut this into more manageable pieces so that i can make them go where i want them to then pop them where you want to, them to be Check where they make contact. Oh, I sound like setting off in one of those old planes. Making contact. I view themselves. Contact. Clear off the little edgy bits there. Pop it in. A little bit of glue there. You don't have to over glue this. I don't think anybody's going to swing on it. If they do, say, stop swinging on my ornaments. Work all the way around. I was hoping to pop down my garden this morning to get some moss. My poor apple tree is so heavy laden with it. I don't buy moss generally. I take it off my apple tree. I think my apple tree breathes a sigh of relief. Says, oh, thank you very much. But I didn't get down there this morning. Time was running out. So I thought, right, let's just get on with what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't have any moss to pad this out with. I'm sure you won't need any, <laughs> she says, sort of confidently. Let's go all the way around with, you can use any sort of foliage. You don't have to use lamb's, you I was going to say lamb's lettuce then, which is a completely different thing. And I'm going to make this look really sumptuous. I don't want it to look mean for two reasons. One, I want to make sure I've hidden all the bits I don't want anybody seeing. And two, I just think... It's nice. I like a little bit of sumptuous foliage. And when you've got it all in place, have a little look and you'll see some bits that really need a little bit of topping up. You can do some padding out. Now I've got a few other bits of I don't know if you'll call that. It's not really floral, is it? And pull that off because that looks very spring-like. And I'm going to dot that in. I've only got two bits. So I'm going to have to carefully decide where I want them to go. There, I think. Like that. And then I've got this flower. Pull it off. And I thought that would go nicely there. So, more glue. And pop it into place. I think that gives wonderful optimism of better weather coming, sunny days, new life and all the birds break out of their eggs and all the lambs are arriving. It's going to be such fun. But let's see what this looks like upon my display. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would love it if you would subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. That would be fabulous. Thank you ever so much. 
Right, back to crafting! For this spring country style craft, I'm going to use this picture frame. You can see it was 20p in the sale from the thrift store. This is one of those thrift stores that sticks annoying tags on that don't come off. Very frustrating. And I've got some foam. This is, hmm, let's measure it. Be very conscientious. That's an inch thick. I've got some pink gingham, which I thought suited the flowers on here and the country theme. And I've got some bits of wood embellishments. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use yet. We'll have a little look when it's finished. So I'm going to take this bit of foam. Oh, there we go. There's the original price on the back. I'll take that off later. It's going to take ages. So I think I'll measure this. It's going to be easier. Really, I don't want this going too far in. I just want it in the aperture at the front. So I would say 10 and a half centimetres by seven. 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 And then 10 and a half. Ten and a half. Do another line. Slip this off. And now I'm going to get this gingham. See how much we're going to need. Mm, it's going to be very tight that way, so I'm going to cut it this way. I know it seems a bit of a waste, but we do need enough to tuck around comfortably. And then. one long edge, turn it around and when this is cool don't rush this because otherwise it'll just ping off and be very frustrating you have to do it again. Put a bit of pressure on, bring the other side around and then glue that side on. And like you're wrapping a gift, tuck in the corners and glue that down. And then when it's cool, do the same with the other side. In case you didn't see what I did, push down over the top, fold in, and then fold up and over. I hope that helped. <laughs> I don't think it was very informative, was it? As I say, if you've ever wrapped a Christmas present, you probably got the hang of this. Now we check for size. Oh, phew, it fits. Pork it in, top and bottom, and then pork in the sides as far down as I can so that it gets a good grip inside the frame. Now you do have the option of gluing this in. I'm wondering if I'm gonna get away without gluing this. Oh yes, it's quite firm. It all depends what sort of frame you're going to be using. And we're virtually there. How was that for quick and easy country style decorations? But I think we need a little something. So I pulled out a few bits of wood, little wood decor things, embellishments, that's the word. And I thought we'd have a look. So I could put a button in the middle because if it's going to be a pin cushion, that would be very sewing related. I've got this little bit of tape measure that I could put on the bottom there. It's a bit plain really, isn't it? I'm not so keen on that. Got this pink heart, but it's the wrong colour pink. So, no, I don't think that's going to go. If I turn it the other way, possibly. <coughs> Got a little bird. Get it swooping like that. Got a butterfly. If you like butterflies, put it at a jaunty angle. I do like a jaunty angle. Oh, I've got this bird. Oh, that's very pretty. For me, it's going to be either the bird or the button. I think the bird. So I'm going to take some hot glue to glue this on, a little blob on the back of the bird. Don't completely cover the bird or whatever it is you're sticking on because if you do, then as the pins go in and dent this, it could start to pull it off. So you only need to glue the centre and then if anything gets pushed in the pins, it'll be fine. So let's check out what this is like with some pins in. Yes, that's going to work perfectly and as you can see you can stick the pins in you can make them decorative if you wanted to if you were going to give this away as a gift or if you want to try selling one at a craft fair something like that 
but I think that's very nice, very useful and an ideal gift for somebody who loves to sew. Right, let's see what this looks like up on my display. it's time for something super quick and super easy to really speed us along on our way for making our spring crafts. I think you're going to like just how quickly this one comes together. Now for a super simple, absolutely gorgeous country craft. I'm going to use this cow. It's a milk jug or a creamer, whatever you call it. And it cost me 50p from the charity shop or thrift store. And oh, that one wasn't too bad to come off. I think it should be compulsory that all labels peel off easily. I'm using this cow because I think she looks very country, especially with her bell around the neck. But you haven't got to use a cow jug. You can use anything with a hole in it. I know, sounds weird. I got this boot here and you can use this in exactly the same way. I've got this that you could use, you could turn this, you'd obviously need a bigger pad to turn this into a pin cushion, but it could be done. And you'd even use a milk churn, a mini one, obviously. Well, you could use a full size one, but um, I'm not quite sure how practical that would be. I'm going to use a pipe cleaner, some more of the fabric we used on the picture frame, some wadding, which I got out of a cushion at our charity shop. They sell cushions for 50p each. And so even if they're a bit ugly or whatever, broken inside, it's always brilliant for the fibre fill. And I've got a little bow. So first thing to do is to roll this wadding into a sort of ball. Put it in the middle of your fabric. Now this is the only piece of fabric I've got, so I'm using a very small piece, really. Ideally, I'd have used a little bit bigger because it would be easier to do the job. Pull it all together, pop your pipe clean around it and twist it, give it a bit of a squidge to fluff it up. Now you can cut your pipe cleaner off if you want to or not if you don't. Now I'm going to take some old scrunched up paper bags I had, but they weren't scrunched up, they were just old so I scrunched them up. I don't keep scrunched up paper bags, I'm not that much of a hoarder. And let's see how much it's going to take to fill this cow. Hmm. I think I'll put the two in so it's got a nice firm base for the pad. Pop that one in as well. And then get your little pad and pop it into place. Making sure you push it down all the way around so that it stays in position. And let's try that with some pins. I've got this little teeny one. It's a vintage one I had in some old lace. And I'm going to pop that in as well because it's a pretty colour. And look at that. How easy was that? I think you could make that in no time at all if you go to a thrift store and buy lots and lots of things with holes in. Imagine how many you could make if you wanted to give them as gifts. Aha! Just spotted my bow. I forgot my bow. <gasps> pop a little bit of hot glue on my bow. And I'm going to pop it above the bell because I just think it makes it look a little bit more cared for, a little bit less just produced in a factory. Look at that. So, so easy to make, so quick to make, so reasonably priced if you can get yourself a bargain. So let's see what this looks like up on my display. Mm. That was fun, wasn't it? I so enjoy crafting, and when you add in all the optimism of spring, too, what a wonderful time to craft! 
Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, to give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, you'll get to see all the other videos that I put out. I've got a lot of ideas coming up this year. I think you're going to enjoy them. I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, have fun. Bye.